Howdy y'all. Today we're gonna be building a 12 by 16 uh, shed here in my buddy Josh's backyard. So come along for the ride here. So for most of this video, I'm gonna be doing a narration overdub. Also, please keep in mind that I am not a licensed professional. So everything I do in this video is to the best of my own ability, but may not be the correct or most efficient way to do this. So first things first, we wanted to get all of these beams leveled, these three beams, and then we made our frame on top of that level base. So we ended up putting our floor studs every 24 inches and cross braced them every two feet. Doubled up. We also doubled up the two by fours on the two ends. Here's our cross bracing here, as you can see. Um, we, we did a little bit extra because we wanted to be sure um, that we had that base really, really supported. Here's what the finished cross beams look like. Here's me adding some over uh, these big main putting in the bolts. We put in some really big lag screws um, to anchor this floor into the three main beams. We didn't want that thing going anywhere. I would also like to say that we did get all of our product from Lowe's, but we are not sponsored by Lowe's. Here is our floor. We did screw up on the measuring, and this is actually 16 by 12 and three inches. But we ended up just going with it. Here's us putting up the framing. These are 16 inch on center studs, just like a normal house with normal eight foot tall walls. Once we got them squared up, uh, we put up a few nails and we put up these support beams. Once we figured out everything was square, then we ended up re-nailing everything in to hold everything together. You can see all my cross beams. I very specifically wanted to save the wall with the door for last because I knew that would be the hardest to put up and install. I ended up having to do that by myself while my partner was out getting more supplies. Had the yard been a different configuration, I highly would recommend for support to put your door on one of these smaller sides. Also, I just wanted to throw this clip in here. Make sure you're eating and drinking plenty of water when you're out on the construction site. Here's our main anchors and us making sure everything is level before we start doing anything else. Now we ended up, before we put in these windows, we wanted to wrap it which I think was a very smart move. We just got this from Lowe's, stapling in it before we put our exterior on. Here's a dry fit, always dry fit windows. It looked really good, so I ended up starting to cock all the way around the window, just using some standard window, um, all weather purpose cocking, and we ended up putting that in for every single window. Once I had cocked all the way around, and we put in the window, and then we used screws to anchor that to the framing. And then we also put caulking over those screws as well. Um, you can also use window uh, waterproofing material that goes on the outside before you put the um, siding on, but we ended up just using more of the waterproof seal stuff. Now, here comes the hard part. Had I would done this again, I would have ordered rafters. We ended up doing this more of an Amish configuration. So we put up a main beam, we got all of our angles cut, and then started anchoring those angle braces 24 on center to the main beam to make our triangle rafters. I'm just screwing all these in with standard construction nails as everything else and making sure everything is straight and level for each one. And we also decided to put some cross bracing underneath here to hold those, hold that main beam up just a little bit more. 
Once we got all that, we straightened all our 24 on center rafters up with our end boards. Um, there was a little overlap, so we had to configure that with some extra board. Here's a shot of my booty. So a little side note on this siding here, we end up using a compressed um, concrete type board. These are just four by eight sheets. And we ended up screwing these into the 16 on center uh, carpentry work. Later, um, he's gonna put some wooden trim to fill in these corners and edges and all that good stuff and around the windows to make it look a little prettier. This comes prime, you can paint this literally whenever. We ended up not being able to complete all of it, so we ended up doing some of this stuff in the dark here for that day. Um, make sure when you're working in the dark, be careful. Um, we ended up using a lot of different lights so we could see what we were doing and it was still so hard. So one of the last things is putting up the roof here. Um, we used a little bit thinner board than the flooring for the rafters and uh, we just put on four by eight sheets. I would have gone crosswise instead of upways, um, but we ended up having to do this quick in the rain and we ended up not getting a whole lot of shots for this. But I think it still went up pretty smooth. Hopefully y'all think so too. Next up, we put this tar waterproofing paper up. Um, just keep in mind, water flows down, so you always wanna overlap on the top much easier if you go from the bottom and go up just like the shingles um, and we stapled that into that OSB board this really helps just give an extra protection underneath the shingles and in between the wood to help shed all that water there are specific nails for this but we decided to end up just going with staples so here's us putting in the shingles this took a pretty short amount of time we ended up going with some cheaper shingles. I really wish we would have went with some thicker ones. Just kind of overlapping here and uh, putting, we put three uh, nails in per shingle. We did down the compression with the nail gun a little bit so we didn't go through the shingle. Um, and we, we also used specific shingle nails as well. Make sure to keep that in mind. Once we got to the top, we decided to do this a little bit differently than some of the newer houses, so don't take this for granted. We basically just used extra shingles and overlapped them and cocked them, nailed them in over top to give that overlay at the very peak, and uh, here's the final product of the shingles. Very nice. So this main cross beam overlapping these doors here was a little bit too short, so I ended up having to re-nail it up about a half an inch higher to make way for these homemade doors. Now I had already made one, so I decided to show you how I made it. Basically, I made a, a frame, a rectangle, and then from there, I started putting in my board, same uh, board that goes around the exterior, and I lined it up, put a couple screws in, then squished it together, made sure it was all square, and then started screwing in all the screws. And I also decided to do some angles on all the corners and screwed all those in. Um, that really made for a really, really solid door. And where the hinges was, I also ended up beefing up as well and put uh, three two by four sticks so that those would have something really sturdy to screw into to hang that door. I didn't want those moving at all. Um, Here's how to install the door. We ended up putting some splints on the bottom to get off the ground, and then we screwed it in once it was all level. And man, did they swing so smooth after that. It was awesome. Here, so here's a quick little walkthrough. Um, later on, he'll be putting a coat of paint on this. There's just primer on the exterior. And he'll be doing some bracing. Um, door handles, just kind of clean everything up. He's gonna be doing some trim around the windows and the sides and a bunch of other trim as well. Um, so that's gonna be at a later date, but uh, here's the final product. Hopefully this helped y'all. Be safe out there and have fun.